Welcome back everyone. We continue to track the breaking news here. The South Fork fire that's burning out of control in Rideau. So this is a live look at one of the webcams that overlooks the downtown area in Rideau. So you can see there that it is pretty much a ghost town as those mandatory evacuation orders are in effect. Uh, we haven't seen any real traffic except for emergency vehicles. And, and a little while ago we saw a water truck making its way down there. And you can see there that looks to be uh, perhaps uh, some kind of emergency vehicle there making its way down the street. But again, that mandatory evacuation order went into effect because the South Fork fire is burning out of control. In fact, you can see that eerie orange glow in the background there uh, in Rideau. So tonight, so we are keeping our fingers crossed as we check in now with reporter Ariana Para, who is joining us now live from a safe distance with what we know so far about that fire and where people are headed. Ariana. Well, we drove as far as we could towards Rio Doso, but we got stopped by this traffic stop right here outside of Mescalero. Now, this is as close as we were able to get to that South Fork fire happening out in Rio Doso. I want to go ahead and give you a look at some of the video that was sent into our newsroom. Go ahead and take a look. You can just see clouds and clouds of black smoke out in the sky, even a little bit of an orange hue on the skyline right there. Now, there are actually two fires burning near Rio Doso. So the South Fork fire, which is the larger one and the salt fire. Now, both of those fires completely uncontained as of right now. And right now, like I said, taking a look at that fire that has just completely exploded. It's just been eight hours since that fire. And this fire went from 15 acres to nearly 5,000 acres in just eight hours. Now, homes completely surrounded with those clouds of dark smoke. It's also causing some power outages. First responders in Rio Doso asking the utility company out there to de-energize parts of the village. Now, right now, eight different outages and just over 2,000 customers affected. I can tell you standing out here right now near Mescaleto, lots of smell of that smoke right now, too. Now, this also caused the entire village of Riodoso to evacuate immediately. Now, the road to evacuate towards Alamogordo, which is right here where we're near, is closed. So everyone is asked to head towards Roswell, where there are many different evacuation centers at different churches and also at the Eastern New Mexico University campus. And we've been trying to get in touch with some of the people who live out in that area who we know. One woman living on the outskirts of Ridoso tells me that she hasn't been told to evacuate yet. She's on standby mode, but she's already begun packing her bags and is already trying to get a hold of different family members who are evacuating. Now, another woman tells me she was just barely able to regain cell phone service, and she says that the evacuation came out of nowhere with almost zero notice. She tells me it was absolutely crazy, and she is very nervous for her family members. So now that she does have service, she is just trying to get a hold of any and all family members just to ensure that they are safe and that they are heading to a good spot that they are able to evacuate to. Now, we are, of course, continuing to cover this. If you can see right now, it's really a ghost town just out here in general. All you can see are some police officers blocking off this road. This is on Highway 70. And then there's another road just right here where a lot of people are being told to turn around if they're heading down this roadway right now. Now, there's no one coming from the other side. And if they are, they are being trafficked over there to that street. We are, of course, continuing to monitor this fire and this entire breaking news situation overnight. And we'll be sure to bring you continuing coverage on the KFOX 14 morning news tomorrow morning from 5 to 9 and online at KFOXTV.com. For now, I'm reporting live near Mescalero, Ariana Parra, KFOX 14 News at 9. We continue to follow developing news out of Rito, so New Mexico this morning, where the South Fork fire continues to burn this morning. And, I, and we do have uh, forecaster Hannah Fresquez up in the Rito so area this morning. Hannah, the sun is beginning to come up and things are getting more visible up there. What are you seeing right now and what updates do you have for us? Well, as soon as that sun rose, we definitely got a different view of what we were seeing throughout the morning. So I want to step aside and give you a live look outside right now. You can see it just how dark that smoke is at the surface level. And you can see it rising into the air, leaving orange hues across the distance. Again, you can see that thick smoke and it is taking over the air. It is very dense outside right now. And you can just smell it throughout the air on your clothes throughout the entire village of Rio Doso. So, so far this morning, 
what we know, we, there is two ongoing fires that sparked yesterday, the South Fork Fire and the Salt Fire. The bigger one is the South Fork Fire, 5,252 acres, 0% containment. Now, the Salt Fire is just southwest of Rio Doso. This is 2,815 acres. Now, the Salt Fire is actually the fire that closed down US-70 towards the Las Cruces area. Both of these were discovered yesterday, and the cause of this fire has not been determined. Yesterday night, I was able to speak with the police chief for Roswell, Lance Bateman, about the evacuation. He told me this is one of the worst fires this area has seen in recent years. So, uh, there was a bad fire in Red Dose about three years ago, not to this extent. Um, so, yeah, this is definitely the biggest one, but it seems like all agencies and, and a lot of the community are already jumping into action and, and uh, volunteering and uh, doing what we need to do. As of right now, we know that this fire is over 5,000 acres and has led to the mandatory evacuation for the entire village of Riodoso. That's about 8,000 people and the surrounding areas around it being sent out to people who live nearby. Now, Bateman says plenty of resources have been set up for the evacuees, but there's no word on how long the evacuation will be in place for. The Village of Riodoso website and their ex accounts have provided routes for people to take since the highway is shut down, and the Emergency Operations Center for the Riodoso Fire Department has been relocated to the county courthouse in Carrizozo. I was also able to get in contact with Mikey McGuire, who has been living in Riodoso the past three years, who says this place is a nightmare. My head's spinning, um, but my my father lives in a nursing home um, there on an upper canyon, and we got a call that they were being evacuated, and we needed to pick him up at the convention center, and so we started making plans to get him, and then we headed here to Las Cruces. Well, my husband, he came across right after or right before the road shut down to the highway, up on the summit he had just come they had already started the roadblock and everything and he was one of the very last ones to get through And according to the Lincoln County government website, Carrizozo High School is open for evacuees. And this is located at 800 Avenue in Carrizozo, New Mexico. And there is plenty more resources in the Roswell area. And that's where that mandatory evacuation was being pointed to as of yesterday. Again, everyone was headed in that direction as US-70 was close headed to Las Cruces. So all those people that were evacuated, again, this is a mandatory evacuation of the village of Riodoso. We're headed into that Roswell area. And this fire is very much still active as this morning, as we are getting that first look this morning. Want to give you one more look as you can see that smoke engulfing the sky of Rito. So right now, very thick smoke taking on through the air. This fire engulfing both sides of Rito. So as the South Fork, the South Fork fire and the Salt fire are sandwiching Rito. So right now with zero percent containment, we'll make sure to update you both on air and online reporting in Rito. So Hannah Frescas, the KFOX 14 morning news. You know, a growing number of people are now making their way to Alamogordo. Yeah, shelters are set up, the hotels and motels are busy trying to take care of evacuees. KFOX 14 News at 9's Eileen Herrera in Ridoso tonight after talking with people who are making that journey in both directions. Eileen. Yes, Robert, Liz, I spend most of the afternoon down in Alamogordo speaking to evacuees and they tell me this wildfire is a wildfire they've been dreading their whole lives. I've never even seen a wildfire this size in this area of my entire life. This one I knew was really big and it was really close. Oh, it looks like an apocalypse. I mean, it's just, I mean, it was just dark smoke. And I mean, I've never seen anything like it in my entire life. Residents looking from shelter from the two massive wildfires in the Ridoso area say the last couple of hours have been exhausting. I had about three hours of sleep. I'm just exhausted, you know. Many describing the moment they realized they had to leave their homes. I was very scared, you know, because I didn't, you know, I didn't know what to do. And, and, uh, but just had to get up out of bed and the police came and knocked on the door and told us to, we need to evacuate immediately. In Alamogordo today, I saw residents from Ridoso making their way to hotels as well as Alamogordo residents collecting donations to help those being impacted. It's, um, it's sad. These people have lost a lot. Um, there's always been fires up there and this is just terrible. 
Residents are hopeful the fires are contained and the town rebuilds. We're going to take care of our, each other and we're going to come back from this. It's going to take however long it's going to take, but Rio Doso is very strong. Some people I spoke with say their homes are safe for now, but they are scared that can change quickly. Our houses were okay earlier today, but I don't know. And um, I didn't have, I have, I don't have a big home, but it's my home. And the thought of losing it is just very scary, very scary. Now, I did make my way up to the town, and I can tell you it's a ghost town. And although you can't really see any of that smoke or fire right now because of how far we had to come back out just to get signal, I can tell you that there is people still making their way in and out trying to get rescue cattle. We saw a lot of horse traders just tr pulling cattle out of that area. But as you can tell, we are still in a very dangerous zone with the fire danger being at the highest level. I'm reporting live in Ridoso tonight. Eileen Herrera, KFOX 14, News at 9. You know, tonight, a family is mourning the life of a loved one killed in those fires that just continue to spread right now. So far, we know at least 1,400 buildings have been lost. Our morning news anchor, Selena Madrid, spoke with a family member whose father was inside one of those buildings. They got the horrible news this morning that their father did not make it out alive. Well, this right here is a look at 60 year old Patrick Pearson. Over the last few days, his family members have been utilizing this Facebook page. It's called Reunite Riadoso, where people are posting about their missing loved ones. Now, they have been posting about him asking if anyone could possibly know where he is as they lost contact with him on Monday. Well, overnight, they actually posted a heartbreaking update saying that it is with great sadness that they were informed he did not survive. I had an officer come to my door. It was a little, a little before 10 o'clock last night that they came to my door and told me that he had been found and he was deceased. As the wildfires in Rio Doso continue to burn and spread, photos and videos are circulating all across social media showing the damage left behind and the business is lost. One of the businesses was the Swiss Chalet Inn, a popular hotel in the heart of the village where Patrick Pearson's kids told me he was living for three to four years. He's a musician and he frequently played um, down on Main at a place called Quarters. And so he just kind of stayed at that hotel in the big suite and, and knew everybody. And, and he had everything he needed. As long as he was playing music, he was happy. And, and last time there was a fire there, he did update us like, hey, it's not really, it's kind of close, but I'm out here helping. Um, he currently could not really help much because he had broken his leg about a week and a half prior. The last time he was heard from was around 4 p.m. Monday mm -hmm. afternoon, saying that he had a ride coming for him at the time. Um, unfortunately, that ride was turned away from responders close to the scene, saying that he can't go up there, it's getting too bad. Cell service also being an issue for that communication to be relayed to Pearson, leaving him in a helpless situation. There was no way for him to know that that ride wasn't going to make it. No way is an easy way to go out, but a wildfire is just so traumatic and devastating and I just can't imagine like what he went through. You both just learning about the passing of your father. What made you decide to want to speak with us today? We figured that by putting his story out there and also making people aware like this isn't a joke. If they tell you to go, you need to go. Like don't wait for people. Get a ride when you can. Well, New Mexico State Police did confirm Pearson's death to me. It is still unclear whether there is more deaths being reported as the two wildfires combined have spread more than 20,000 acres so far. You can count on us to continue to keep a close eye on this developing situation and the families impacted, both on air and online at kfoxtv.com. Reporting from the studio, I'm Selena Madrid. All right, Selena, thank you for that. Amidst those devastating images in Ridoso, support is flooding into that community. 
Local tribal centers have become a hub for supplies and volunteers from all over southern New Mexico. Yeah, KFOX 14 News at 5's Harrison Parker spoke with the volunteers about why they came out to help and also why it's so important to them to do that. Harrison? Well, I'm here at the Muscalero Community Center and Muscalero Apache Tribal Headquarters where volunteers have been unloading supplies all day long. Now, there are dozens of people, some from as far as Las Cruces and Santa Fe. One volunteer I spoke with from Las Cruces said he just couldn't stay away. So quick, and my first thought was trying to get out of work and see how I could come over here and help my family out. For the past few days, organizers here at the community center have worked with out-of-towners to get locals the supplies they need. One Alamogordo public school employee said it's all hands on deck. People keep filling the buses yeah. down in Alamogordo and we keep bringing them up here. Verdoso is a big part of the community down there as well. Like all the villages kind of stick together, but to, to see what they're losing is just, uh, it's heartbreaking. Donovan Balsley, the transportation coordinator for the public schools, say they have six school buses filled with supplies like hygiene products, food, and water going back and forth every day. Just a, it's a huge group, group effort. Everybody's working together, you know, the churches are working together, we're working together in the city. Dwayne Duffy, vice president of the Tribal Executive Committee, says support efforts are finally starting to run smoothly. The last 72 hours have been chaos. Um, really, within the last 12 hours, everything has been setting in place and, you know, getting the emergency operations center going here. Duffy says after the fire, he's concerned about potential flooding coming from incoming rains. And so ensuring that, you know, we don't have anybody in the way of those uh, floodwaters downstream once the, you know, once the rains hits or, you know, anything like that. All right, so that was Harrison uh, Parker reporting for us there. Uh, you know, for many uh, Riodoso homeowners, meanwhile, they're left now with this, I mean, agonizing wait, basically, to find out if their home is among those destroyed. But today we heard from one man who knows without question that his house is gone. Take a look here. These are photos uh, that's all that's left of a two-story home that belonged to Will Umfries. He saw these photos on our newscast yesterday and immediately recognized the charred remains of his house. The only thing left standing there, a chimney stack. This is what his home used to look like as recently as Monday morning. These photos of much better times. You can see there that this was the kind of home you see all over Ridoso, a place where so many go to escape from the summer heat or to enjoy the winter snow in that town of 7800. Bill and his family are safe, but like many others, are now trying to figure out what comes next. And I also want to show you this video here. I mean, look at this, just the ashes left behind as a result of the fire. And you can see the smoke and the rubble. This was once a family's home in this video here. I don't know whether we're going to have a home. We were engulfed in smoke. That scared me to death. The best you can do is just try to not fall apart. And that's all you can do is just hope. Hundreds of people from Redoso are dealing with the fact that their homes have burned and worse yet, some are still looking for loved ones. We know a second person has been confirmed dead by New Mexico State Police. They say the skeletal remains of a person were found in a burned vehicle on Tuesday. Meantime, the governor of New Mexico, Michelle Lujan Grisham, releasing new numbers, announcing that out of the 1,400 structures that have been destroyed, 500 of those structures are people's homes. And to make matters worse in Redoso, some areas were under a flash flood warning last night as water in the Rio Ridoso came up more than six feet in just 15 minutes. And Evan, while well, rain you would think is good for fires, it was not the case, right? We're also dealing with some drastic drastic weather changes here. Um, but actually, before we go to Evan, we do want to send things back over to forecaster Hannah Frescas as she has been in Redoso since these fires began. Yeah, she's been there over the last few days and it actually appears, Hannah, you're in an evacuation center this morning. What exactly can you tell us about how that shelter is shaping out? 
Well, let me tell you, it's a very emotional scene this morning as many people are starting to wake up and grab breakfast and grab donations from the community. You can see right behind me right now, donations coming in by the minute right now as they are going to be moving in in just a couple minutes. But what we know so far is thousands of people displaced from the fires today, 8,000 people from the village of Rito. So just in a blink of an eye and then a couple days ago, the Rito so Downs area. So right now we are watching people come in and grab what they can as some of them may not return back to Rio so as their homes are completely burned. So what we know so far this morning, while we were headed to Rio so the Rio so area, we were trying to get back in where we were yesterday. Completely shut off perimeters, even extended even more as many as the flash flooding was. And it was very severe, I told us, by police officials. As you can see behind me, more coming in right now. They are putting more donations out. We're looking at socks. We're looking at clothes. We're looking at shampoos, um, baby food, diapers from all over the area. Now, one of the volunteers with the Red Cross that did tell me that a man all the way from Phoenix, Arizona, drove overnight with a trailer full of donations, wondering that he what they can do to help. So, again, these are all from the community, and the people that are displaced are able to take whatever they are need to, greeted with a comfort bag as soon as they walk in with essentials such as toothbrush, toothpaste, and a blanket. So what we know so far, 0% contained as of this morning, and the smoke did not look as bad as it was yesterday. Smell was definitely down from yesterday as well, but what we are now introducing is the weather factor as thunderstorms are going to be continuing through the weekend as well, which again, Jessica did say earlier, it does sound like a good thing in terms of rain, but also we have to keep in mind that we are also looking at lightning strikes. These thunderstorms are going over burn scars of the South Fork fire and also the Blue 2 fire. And many may not know the Blue 2 fire did start in June, but it is still not 100% contained. It is still at 92%. So that is still an ongoing fire and the South Fork fire as well as the Salt fire. So in reality, we all still have three fires going on, two very massive, and then that Blue 2 fire at 92%. So we're going to keep you updated here on uh, both on air and online at kfoxtv.com. Stick with us throughout the entire show. Reporting live in Capitan, Hannah Frescas, the KFOX 14 Morning News. Rainy weather and flooding in the mountains of southern New Mexico. Cooler, wetter weather is helping to stop two wildfires from spreading, but the rain also prompting concerns about flash floods and mudslides in the burn area. It's also affecting how much progress firefighters able, are able to make. Both fires remain 0% contained. Fire, there, there is, of course, the Salt and South Fork fires that have burned more than 24,000 acres. 1,400 structures have been lost, including at least 500 homes. And today, the FBI confirms that they have joined the investigation into the cause of the fires that officials had said earlier this week was human caused. Hello, everyone. Thanks for being with us. I'm Robert Olguin. And I'm Liz DeWicki. So, you know, we've just mentioned the challenges that the weather's causing for fire crews in Rudoso. So mostly the flooding, but there is much more to it than that. KFOX 14 News at 5's Adiana Pata spoke with fire teams to find out why that fire is still not contained, even though there's been rain the past few days. Right now, there is 0% of that that we as firefighters believe is completely safe from having fire threaten those areas of the edge. Mike McMillan is a spokesperson for the Southwest Incident Management Team for the South Fork and Salt Fires, ripping through over 23,000 acres of land. So it's a big firefighting effort. He says the reasoning behind the zero containment despite rain for the past few days has to do with the lines already drawn out and their confidence in keeping the fire within them. Even though many parts of that edge are already blackened and we have, we have containment lines around some of those areas, but that doesn't mean that the fire can't cross those in the wind. While the rainfall is helping to put out some of the fire. With 100% humidity and full rain, it's really going to um, help us uh, in our efforts to contain the fire where we can. A spokesperson for Lincoln County's Office of Emergency Management says Friday's expected rainstorm brings other concerns. So any kind of mass amount of water that goes through, it grabs dirt, it grabs trees, it grabs power lines, it grabs poles, it grabs rock, and just carries it with it. So when it hits down at the lower ends, it takes out culverts, it takes out homes, it takes out anything in its way. Well, as you can see around me, the rain's just continuing to come down in this Rio Doso and Capitan area. We're even having to use plastic bags to keep our equipment safe. Now I wanna go ahead and show you the National Weather Service actually issuing a flash 
flood warning. And they say it's in effect in this area for quite some time. Despite that rainfall, McMillan says the active fires are likely to stay at zero containment for at least the coming days. That doesn't mean that it's not uh, in a lot better condition than it was. I mean, we are building containment lines around many parts of these fires, particularly where there's values at risk. So that was Ariana Para reporting. There are more than a thousand crew members up there working to contain those two fires.